God's grace and his peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. During this time of the year when the days seem to be getting shorter and the weather may be a little bit more gloomier and colder, we could use a little bit of encouragement. For some who may be missing family and friends during this time may be experiencing that bit of grief and a few tears. For some who are without jobs during this time of the year as they see others being busy and celebrating, there may be a lot of sadness. And for some who are constantly facing pain, whether it's the physical part of their lives or maybe even the mental or emotional part, they are looking for some sort of relief. So while most of, our, most of this world is moving with a lot of energy during this time of the year, some of us may not be moving very fast at all. During our Old Testament reading for today, we heard from the prophet Zephaniah, who starts off this passage with singing and rejoicing. And if you're part of the people who are already singing and rejoicing, this will actually refocus you the correct direction. But if you're part of the people group who are struggling during this time of the year, for whatever reason, Zephaniah will give you the reason why you should be singing and rejoicing. And if you can't, Zephaniah will tell you who does. So let's start with, with Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 15. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. These words were given as a great source of comfort to the people who were, strangely enough, already comfortable. They were fairly doing well. But their lives would change from good to much worse. As a reminder to hang on to the promises of God. Because that will carry you through. And what was that promise of God that they were to hang on to? Your judgment taken away. That is, your sins removed from you. And your enemies, yes, they also would be removed, like the devil and his minions. All of this was accomplished for us through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when he died on the cross. So the reason for the singing and rejoicing that Zephaniah brings is that the King of Israel, the Messiah, is now in your midst. And as the text reminds us, and you shall never again fear evil. This, of course, would be finalized when Christ comes again on the last day. But we're not there quite yet. So in our lives today, we need to remember that Christ will come again. As we remember that Christ already did take on flesh and blood for the purpose of dwelling in our midst. So when we see the baby Jesus in the creche, we see God's promise to send a Savior fulfilled. As the Gospel writer St. John reminds us in the John chapter 1, verse 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory. Glory is the only Son of the from the Father, full of grace and truth. Yes, God, or you could say our King, the King of kings and Lord of lords, is in our midst. This King was born in Bethlehem. This King grew up and then entered into Jerusalem to take away our judgments and clear away our enemies, as Zephaniah says. However, for us today, we need to realize that the King is in our midst that the king is always with us, especially through God, his word and sacrament. Strangely enough, Zephaniah even helps us make this connection 
in case if we have forgotten. So let me go back to Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 18. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Now, I will admit, this is kind of one of those rougher English Hebrew translation type verses. I do like what the English Standard Version says. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival. So, let me start off with maybe a little bit of explanation. Let's think of a festival as, a religious festival, of course, as an opportunity to gather around God's word and sacrament. A place where God would meet us right here to strengthen us. Just as we're doing during this time of Advent, preparing ourselves for the celebration of Christmas. And then we cherish these opportunities to be with our King in our midst. And so, yes, as we gather around word and sacrament, we can be singing. We can be rejoicing. But now, what would happen if we could not prepare during this time of Advent and we could not celebrate Christmas? Very much like the cartoon account of the Grinch who stole Christmas. What would happen if there actually was a Grinch that came in some sort of different type of form, of course, maybe like COVID or maybe even something else? And churches had to shut down. This isn't impossible. It actually happened for Easter 2021. Yes, the churches went into, or 2020, I should say. Yes, the churches went into online services. But better to have some word of God with those online services instead of no word of God, correct? The answer was yes. However, something was greatly missing. That physical gathering with the king in our midst, was missing. Together with that rejoicing of hearing the forgiveness of sins, there was mourning, so to speak, in the Christian community during that Easter time. Now we're ready to understand verse 18. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Notice it is God who is the one who calls, gathers, enlightens us through the Holy Spirit, as Martin Luther reminds us in the small catechism. It is through the Holy Spirit that we have an opportunity to rejoice in the forgiveness of sins. It is through the Holy Spirit we celebrate with eager expectation of the hope in the return of Christ. But while we hope, we wait. We have the Holy Spirit because the King is in our midst. And it was that King of kings and Lord of lords who sends us that Holy Spirit, as Jesus himself noted in John chapter 15, verse 26, when he says, But when the Spirit comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. What we need to realize during this Advent preparation is the forgiveness of sins is really what it's all about. So I like what Isaiah needs to remind us. From Isaiah chapter 6, let me just grab verses 1 and 5. In the, king that, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Verse 5, and I said, Woe to me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. It's interesting. The King was in the midst of Isaiah. But Isaiah was not filled with excitement and joy. When he saw the Lord seated on the throne, high and exalted. No, he cried out, woe to me, I am lost. In the same way, we feel ashamed of our sinfulness. Even though we realize that our judgments are taken away. 
throughout history of God's people, there was a joy. At least for those that remained faithful. It wasn't a joy in the things of this world. But it was a joy of being in the midst of that King of Kings and Lord of Lords. They experienced the forgiveness of sins, which is a deep down joy that expresses itself in a quiet delight. So let's return back to Zephaniah for a moment. Verse 16. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, fear not, let not your hands grow weak, especially referring to those who are struggling, especially during this time of the year. Verse 17, the Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you. By his love, he will exult over you with loud singing. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. Even when we can't sing because of the heaviness of our heart. Even when we can't sing because of the burdens of this world even when we can't sing because of the weight of sin is weighing heavy upon us. As Christians, we realize that the king in our midst will sing over us. He will quiet your anxious hearts and minds with his eternal love song. So while we if we're able to rejoice on the outside, if we can. But on the inside, we can rejoice, even if the outside has a hard time with it. All because the King is in our midst. So during this time of Advent, when we realize that we need to prepare ourselves for the coming King, and that the King is in our midst, we do rejoice. Whether we can do that with a great smile on our face or just rejoice in our hearts, knowing that you have the forgiveness of sins, your judgments are taken away, your enemies are removed, and the Lord himself is in your midst singing over you that beautiful song of forgiveness. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Now the peace of God that surpasses all our understanding We'll continue to guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.